Hi, my name is April and welcome to the Yoga Ranger Studio. Our practice today is focused for all of you people out there like myself who feel when you wake up you're a little bit crunchy, kind of like the tin man or tin woman and you need a little bit more time and a little bit of more of that oil to kind of help bring everything online for your day. So if you do not wake up magically flexible when you get out of bed, some of your joints kind of go ee, 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 then this practice is for you. You need a couple of props. As always, a blanket underneath. If you don't have that, don't worry about that. You can use the carpet. It does not not absolutely necessary. We will be using a second rolled up towel or blanket, so you do need this. And some blocks nearby, just in case you need them. A book, a small table, a small bench will work just as well, or a couple of puffed pillows for your support. Those aren't absolutely necessary, but it's nice to have them nearby in case you need them for your practice. So we're gonna start first, just in whatever seated position you like best, palms facing up. Start to settle into your breath. Whether this be the start of your day or the end of your day, bring yourself to the present moment. Let your inhale lift you and lengthen your spine and let your exhale soften everything starting to extend your exhale maybe your eyes close maybe they become half-lidded make your breath strong enough to keep you alert but not so strong that it over energizes you that it'll I want you to be a little softer when everything to kind of soften out. Maybe taking a moment here to set your intention for your practice. Maybe at the beginning of your day could be something like to have a really great day or to have a really fulfilling day or to be happy today. It's the end of your day. To have a good night's sleep, good deep rest, healing overnight. Gently opening your eyes. Our first pose we're going to take is fish pose. So this is a supported fish. We're going to take that blanket out about a third of the way down the mat. Come onto your back. And you're going to put your shoulder blades right across that blanket and then start to kind of inch your way off the blanket arms out to the side now you can bend the elbows or not and here we're just going to take a nice straight leg version let your toes fall out to the side or in if that feels better for you and you want to take your arms in whatever position allows you to be fully supported so my shoulders aren't touching they're just hovering above the floor if this is too much for you, you can inch a little bit further and allow your shoulders to come down a little bit more. Close your eyes, return to that breath, that present moment breath with the extended exhale. And here you can focus on that three part breath a little bit more, inhaling belly, chest, collarbones, exhaling collarbones, chest, belly. And when you are someone who is a tin man or a tin woman, holding yin poses longer can be more beneficial for you. Really allowing yourself to soften, really deepen the pose, extend and lengthen.
because your chest is lifted in this pose, this allows you to really open the chest and you'll feel some lengthening along the side waist as well. So from maybe the hip bones up. If you wanna go a little bit further, you can take those arms up a little bit higher overhead. Once again, remaining where you can totally have support of the floor underneath your forearms and elbows. Taking some time here to check in with your body, noticing where those spaces are. They may need a little bit more breath, a little bit more attention. And breathing into those spaces, making space. Maybe you have joints you know of that are particularly crunchy, that crackle and creak a lot. Breathe some space into those. about halfway through. Remember that in yin, it may seem like we're doing absolutely nothing and even may feel like there's not a lot going on, but yin was really, is the perfect practice for tin men and tin women. Our connective tissue needs a little bit of mobilization. We need to find some fluidity to our body, some deeper lengthening. perfect practice for the morning because you can do it cold so you don't have to warm up for yin this practice is just the way it is you can just lay down and start practicing and give you more mobility throughout the entire day I think you will find at the end of the day you have a lot more space flexibility mobility and opening than you had So for this last minute, go ahead and take the bottoms of the feet together, knees out to the side, just for a minute here. Last two deep breaths. Go ahead and take one knee up toward the ceiling, foot flat, the other knee. You're gonna press to your feet, lift your hips, and very carefully take that blanket off to the side. Now rest your back on the floor, take the feet wide, drop the knees together. Notice that feeling in between poses. It's kind of the pose in between the pose. Our next pose is banana pose. So go ahead and walk your feet out straight, heels flat. You're gonna walk those heels over to the left. Move your upper body over to the left just a little bit. Keep your hips settled. You can keep those heels side by side or you can cross that little right leg over that left. Take that right arm up overhead and grab hold of the wrist or the fingers 
or the elbow, whatever feels best for you. Now you can keep your head looking straight up or turn and look over your right shoulder a little bit. I find that one of the places that is the most constricted when I first wake up in the morning and sometimes throughout the day is that entire side body. That side body being constricted prevents you from lifting your arms or your shoulders, your legs, stops your breathing from being as deep. So it's really important to focus on stretching the side body every single day. Breathe into the right lungs. You're halfway through. If you would like to deepen your pose, you can grab closer to the elbow. You can start to press through that right heel and lengthen that right side body a little bit more. You can even shift your heels further over to the left. Or if it's too much, come back out of it a little bit. Adjust it for your appropriate edge and where you know that you can sustainably hold it for another couple of minutes. Last minute here. If your arms are feeling a little bit too much in this, you can start to release those out to the side. You don't have to pull on the hand or fingers. gently starting to come out. You're going to lift your head and turn it back to center first, then take your arms alongside the hips out to the side. Move your upper body back into place and unwind those heels. Take them wide and just relax. Notice how this side feels compared to the other. Here again, checking in with your breath. Noting the sensations of the pose in between the poses. If 
very gently switching to the other side. So walk those feet over to the right if you don't have blocks in the way. You can have them side by side again. Move the upper body over. Remember that each side is very different, so it may feel like you have to go further or less far on this side. Take that left arm up and over. Grab whatever feels comfortable for you. Breathe into that left side body, you lengthening it out, feeling the right body soften a little bit. So sometimes we hold some restriction, some muscle engagement in the right side body to compensate. So release the glutes, the lower back. Here again, you can start to deepen that by pressing through the heel, maybe walking the heels over further or pulling a little bit more, moving your hand down the arm so you get a better grip nearer the elbow if you're not already there. We're releasing a little bit. This last minute, you can release your arms, soften them. your head come back to center hands alongside the hips unwind the ankles and just hang out here and go ahead and bring the bottoms of your feet flat knees toward the ceiling gently roll over to your right side press yourself up we're going to take that rolled blanket from before and use that as a little prop to give us some forward fold. So here's where your blocks might come in handy, so pull those in. Take just a normal, relaxed, kind of seated forward fold. If you sit on the very edge of the blanket, it allows your pelvis to tilt naturally forward. Take those blocks out in front, and start with a little higher, because you never know where you're gonna need to be. You're gonna take eagle arms, so take that right underneath the left, palms in front, and then go ahead and lean forward maybe taking those elbows down 
to the blocks or hands down to the blocks or down to the floor depending on you. Drop your chin to your chest. Breathing into that back space between the shoulder blades, letting the shoulders soften down toward the hips. And if you find here in the next two minutes that you want to lower the blocks and come further down to the floor, you can, or you can take the blocks higher if that feels more comfortable for you. This last minute, we're going to unwind those arms and just deeply forward fold. Start to walk your hands back up to center. Move those blocks over to the side just a little bit. Lean back, bring your feet flat, and just windshield wiper side to side. And then taking our second side. So I normally take the right leg in front the first time, but if you did the same thing, and you're going to switch which leg is in front. Stack your blocks however you remember it last time. You may change it this time. This time we're going to take left underneath right eagle arms and fold over. Remembering that each side is very different, so you may need to take the blocks higher or lower depending on your mobility on this side. Dropping your chin to the chest, softening the upper back. Settling into the hips.
here. Once again, you can adjust the blocks higher or lower, settling your arms down, letting the shoulders soften toward the ground. This last minute, unwind those arms, flatten your blocks out, and come down just a nice deep forward fold. Noticing any sensations in the arms and back and hips and softening everything, making space. Maybe feeling the energy shift across the back side of the body the upper back, shoulders. Starting to walk your hands back up to center and take those blocks up to the side unwind yourself and come into child's pose. So take a really wide knees child's pose here. As far as you can go, we're not gonna be here for super long. Shift your hips back, walk your hands out, forehead down to the floor or to a block. about one more minute here. Extending your exhale, lengthening your spine, Feeling that length run the entire expanse of your spine from your tailbone up through your neck. Start to lift your head, walk your hands in, pull those knees a little bit closer together. Take a couple of cat cows here. And then we're gonna come onto our back. So we're gonna take twisted roots. One of my favorite twists, arms out to the side. I'm gonna cross that right leg over the left. Shift your hips over to the right. And drop those knees over to the left. So you can double cross if you want. That's a lot sometimes, or you can partially cross. Just let those knees drop. You can look straight up toward the ceiling or lift your head and turn and look over your right shoulder. This is a great twist for the lower back, the IT band, the outside of the hip compartment, down through the leg, even up through your chest and arms.
Maybe you find here that your twist will naturally deepen a little bit more. Allow that to happen. Or if you want to come out of the pose a little bit, you can start to unwind. Find the place where you feel sensation and that's where you need to be. Extending your exhale, breathing into those spaces where you feel sensation. Maybe coming back around to connect with your intention for your practice. How will your day or your night be? What is your intention for this day or night? If you have your head turned to the right, pick the head up. You're going to turn it toward the opposite direction, so over toward the left. Just for these last few breaths. It often feels really good to stretch the neck as well. On your next inhale, come back to center. Engage your core, bring those knees back through the middle. Unwind, shift your hips straight down the center, drop the knees together, take a couple of breaths here. Notice how it feels to come back to this position. Feel sort of the spine unfurling and unwinding. Feel the hips settle, the spine lengthen. Notice how the right side feels from the left. Then taking our second side, so go ahead and take that left leg over the right above the knee, shift the hips over to the left, drop those knees over to the right. Sometimes you'll hear your spine pop back into place, sometimes not. You can look straight up or lift your head, turn and look over that left shoulder. Like gravity, move your knees closer to the floor. Extending your exhale, a little longer than your inhale, breathing into those spaces.
last few breaths. Lift the head, turn and look over your right shoulder. Gently bring your chin back to center. Engage your core lightly. Bring those knees back through the middle. Unwind. Settle your hips down the center. Drop the knees together. Palms alongside the hips. Spending a few moments here in the rebound. The pose between the pose. And very slowly, you can either stay here or you can take those heels out to the corners of the mat. Gently rock your shoulder blades underneath. Turn your palms to face up alongside the hips and let your toes fall out to the side. Maybe gently turning your head side to side a time or two to settle into Shavasana. Here, taking a few moments to scan from the crown of your head down to your toes. Notice any change after your practice. You feel a little bit more balanced, a little bit more mobile. Maybe everything feels a little bit softer, not so crunchy or crackly. Taking the time to reconnect with your intention for your day or your night. Repeating it softly to yourself three times, sealing your intention. practice support your intention. May it support your life. May it support you in your everyday living. If you have more time, please feel free to stay in Shavasana as long as you can. If this is the time that you have. Very gently begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes and softly bend one knee at a time. Bring your feet flat. On your next inhale, take your arms up overhead, stretch through your spine and flatten your lower back to the floor, lengthening as far as you can. And exhale, roll over to your right side, just a couple of breaths here on your right. Remember, you need to take the feelings you have on the mat, gently pressing all the way up into your everyday life. Come into a seat, whatever seat is most comfortable for you. Eyes softly open, palms face up on your knees or in your lap. On your next exhale, drop those fingertips down to the floor. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up overhead. Open your eyes, look up at your hands. Exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. I hope this practice helps reset your tin man, tin woman creakiness. I know this is a practice I return to time and again because I wake up sort of stiff like the tin man and hope to sort of loosen that up and it helps bring me more mobility throughout the day, a little bit more comfort in my breath, in my movement, in my everyday living. And over time will help you possibly combat that creaky crunchiness if you sort of continue to help mobilize this tissue and keep it healthy. Fluidity is important, right? The joints as well. 
So if you enjoyed this practice, please like and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And if you are enjoying these practices, please don't forget to subscribe in the button over here to your right, my left, and join me for more practices every single week. If you are looking to deepen your practice and would like to experience more yoga practices with me, I now have an online member community with a community forum with exclusive practice videos and over 115 uh, remastered YouTube videos that are ad-free, uh, cleaned up without all this extra stuff at the beginning and end. Very easy to watch. Also live calls are included in that. So I will see you once a month for a live video call to discuss what is most important to you about your practice or your experiences in your everyday life. A chance to get to know me and some of the other people as well. So join me on that. It is VHX, the yoga ranger dot VHX dot TV. So the yoga ranger dot VHX dot TV is the link you would go to. There's also a link down below and up above for that as well. So I hope to see you either here again on YouTube, on your mat, or there at the member site. I would love to have you join us. Have a great day.